Um, this is drawn over to me because um, earlier on I was showing down one of the uh, one of the unfortunate things that I don't like doing is demonstrating. Um, but I, my local club had asked me whether I could stand in on a demonstration for an hour for their Christmas party night. Um, so I agreed to that. But I needed to come up with a demonstration that would be less than an hour and also of interest to Turners. Um, that's always the difficult part to do. Um, come up with something that's of any interest to a group of guys that are all different uh, um, levels of turning. Um, don't know if I can share screen. Go ahead, uh, please. Um, you can share it. Go ahead. Might be able to. I saw. There it here. comes. I saw these party popper cannons. Don't know if anybody's come across them, but as I was looking around to get some inspiration, I come across these party popper cannons. As a production turner and somebody that sells his work, I need to look at something like that and think, how long is that going to take me? There's there's a lot of areas here. There's four wheels to turn. These bits are done on bandsaw. Mm -hmm. There is there's, there's bits to glue together. Um, so I thought that that was really quite a good idea but really quite time consuming for me. And I needed to come up with something a little bit simpler. So what I did was I set to, um, and as always, the first one that you make is um, never right. But the first one I made um, was massive in size, um, but simplified. Having made several of them, I eventually got a prototype that I was happy with and a way of turning it that I was also prolific with, and that is my version of being on the screen. The reason it became quite a good demonstration was you've got lots of disciplines. Um, you're drilling on the lid, you're also turning off center underneath. So the actual design has become very simple. I make them with a plunger, so you have a plunger, so there's only nine inches of timber, inch by inch square, to produce this. The popper goes into the top, plunger, so cool. all the way through to the back, comes out at this end, and then you can pull a string through, which releases the string. Mm. A lot of fun was had on Christmas Day with nine of these around the Christmas table. Um, for very little cost and several minutes of turning. Um, so I just thought I'd share that with you. I know Graham said, I've never seen one of them before, and I really like that idea, Martin. Um, so Dan, he got he got a personal demonstration tonight. I'm sorry, guys, but Dan was around and he got a personal demonstration. So he might show you how to make it one day, but that's the idea. And that's the design I come up with. And if anybody wants to, I mean, like I say, you could you could clone the wheels, you could texture the wheels, you could make the cannon. What I would say is keep your cannons quite short because the longer the cannon is, the less the party popper protrudes. <laughs> quite short. I will also say <laughs> It's a lot more fun on Christmas Day if you put your party popper in and then you put a Brussels sprout in front of it. And you can fire the Brussels sprouts across the Christmas table. I'm not going to come to But if you put the popper in and a Brussels sprout at the front, they work great. Well, Martin, you know what I think? You know how last, last Christmas the gnomes were really popular? Yeah, I know what you're going to say about that. Um, then it, this, this next coming Christmas, yeah, that's um, what's going to be the um, big thing. Party in popper the, cannons. In, yeah. the UK, in the UK, I've already got the market because I have I have cut I've cut 150 blanks today. Tomorrow I will do another 150 blanks, and I should have maybe four or five hundred of these by the end of the week, man. Yeah, um, they haven't they haven't caught on quite here yet. So yeah. I'm thinking this Christmas. 
I'll probably be making a a, a good thousand of them before <laughs> before <laughs> Christmas rolls around. <laughs> but that's that's as easy as that. Yeah, it was a very intuitive uh, demonstration that Martin gave me. I was I'm inspired, and I appreciate it so much. Good. Yeah, I wish I was in on that demo. Man, I missed it. <laughs> well, you bowed out early. Do your demo. I'll have to put a demo on. I'll have to. I'll have to put a demo on. I'll. I'll. I'll, I'll do one at some point and put it in the chat. Not that I do demos. <laughs> How, how's it? the wheels attached to the cannon? Yeah, right. When I first did these, because they were just for me, they were for Christmas Day. It was a bit of a demo. I decided that it would work quite happily with um, super glue. So the first two or three that I did, I just super glued them on. Um, because I want to sell them and I want to put them to market and I'd like to sell them to other people, I don't like sticking things together like that. So now what I do is I drill a dowel into the base. Um, where's the one that I did the demo on? This one. I drill a dowel through this base pack all the way through there and into the cannon. It comes right into the cannon. And then what I do is put a little bit of super glue on the outside of the dowel and push that into the cannon, making sure that it doesn't protrude to stop the to stop the um, party popper going down the barrel. Um, what I will say is when you put your super glue on the little dowel and you push it into the cannon, make sure you don't have super glue on the end of the peg. Otherwise, you're all going to look very silly when you come along next week with these stuck to your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> So just put super glue on the ends. Just put a little dab around the outside, and then basically it slides through, and you can just sand the sand the end up at the bottom, and that then secures them very tight. Okay. Nothing to them. Everybody on screen should be able to turn one of them. Isn't that right, Dan? Yes, Dan is it is. I was doing his it demo tonight. So I've never seen so some easy. three pieces of wood. Yeah. Two pieces well, let's of let's admit the idea. That's like a good idea. Yeah, I like the idea. Where do you get the party? You got the, you got the wheel and axle. Where do you get the party poppers? Party poppers it, here in England, I bought them at Tesco. My local, you must have them in Walmart. You, oh, Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> right now? Right oh, now? Yeah. For New Year's Eve, they got them in all the stores. Packages, packages of them. According to our news, your Walmart has everything, absolutely everything. Um, so you must be able to buy them places like Walmart, any of the party shops where you would buy balloons, cards. Party house. And, and party houses house like that. You can buy them year round at those. Yeah, year round at party house. Um, party poppers are pretty much a standard size. Um, I use a 28 mil. Um, portion of it to drill the barrel because a party popper is around about 25 mil. Sometimes you get a bit of plastic on the outside, which makes it 26. Um, but a party popper should be a fairly, fairly standard size. I like that, Martin. That's a good idea. Um, the only thing you need to remember, and um, that some of you might not have noted, is when you drill the barrel. It's got to be quite tight towards the end of the cannon because the party popper needs to come out. It's got to protrude. It's got to come out of, out of, the, out of the cannon. Otherwise, you can't get the string. And there is no way you will be able to feed the string down the barrel and get it through here, through, through the bottom. So your party popper must come out of the end of the barrel. Mm -hmm. So the... 28 mil force bit comes down to that line, that back line. Then you've only got about 5 mil of the 10 mil bit that drills the hole through. And for those here, uh, 28 mil is one and one eighth inch. Yeah. What's 10 mil? Is it 10 mil? Oh, I thought you said no, 28. No, there's two holes. No, it's 28. You're right. Yeah. The force bit is 28 mil, so. One and whatever. And five is uh, like a quarter inch. Quarter inch. Yeah. That's the hole at the back. 